have to say that, or they'll shut me down again. Hey, anybody have a line? Oh, yeah, Tony Prince is a loser. Fantastic. Oh, I can't wait to stop by. That's about all we have time for. We'll stay on top of the celeb. Stalking them till they snap. Partying with some friends. After three days of smoking ice and swapping partners, a man's got to get some shut eye. Maybe he left the gas oven on or fell asleep smoking a cigarette. And next thing you know, boom! You're homeless and wanted for manslaughter. Not with Vig Insurance. Call one of our claim representatives immediately and we'll deal with the law and forensics and get rid of any unfortunate evidence or unwanted evidence. You've just lost a home and some close friends. Why lose your freedom? Big insurance. Because freedom equals peace of mind. Weasel News. It's a bad day for Deputy Police Commissioner Francis McCreary. McCreary's older brother Derek was shot in front of him in Algonquin, and his younger brother Gerald has been arrested in Alderney on racketeering charges. If that wasn't enough, Public Liberty Online, a liberal opinion website, is throwing corruption allegations at him. Eric House, Weasel News. The Bosdak skyrocketed five points today as the American dream became even more of a confusing mess controlled by bankers and rich investors. Growth and in value indices showed higher than average default on arm loans, but not 15-year fixed liquid commodities funds in an effort to thoroughly confuse you and make you think that all this shit really means something. A 14-year-old boy was reunited with his family today after spending an amazing six years lost in a crepia store in Alderney. Man, it was a nightmare. Every time I thought I found my way out, I'd end up back home furnishings. I never want to see a floating candle again. The Swedish furniture giant has refused to comment, but nobody understands their stupid language anyway. Their website is Krapia.com. This is Weasel News. This is Weasel News. Oh, yeah. All right, Brucey, let's go drinking. I'll pick you up in the next hour. Nice one, NB. See you then. Gave you on the end of your arms, okay? Are you with me, Bastion's buddies? And now, here's the man himself, Richard Bastion. All right, thanks for joining me, Bastion's buddies, here and on 1,400 radio stations worldwide. Welcome to the show. Now, today we're talking about family values on the program. And I'll tell you right now, I'm married to two women. My wife, my lovely, lovely wife, with her beautiful hair and pretty face. The second person I'm married to, America. Now, here's my thing. I won't go down south on either. Why? Because it does not help with populating this great country with real Americans. It's about pleasure, not procreation, and that is pointless. Okay, now if you can't alliterate a real idea, it's too complicated, and I will not blind you with science. Now, now I know why bigamy is illegal in most states. It, it, you know, it's tough. It's tough serving two women. In my line of work, you need to be able to sing the national anthem or a, uh, a spirit show tune with equal amounts of enthusiasm. But remember, I ain't just whistling Dixie, because nobody, nobody likes a whistler or a whistleblower. You know, it's like when uh, you see when you see two people kiss in public, or especially ugly people. Go, good Lord, keep it to yourself, folks, okay? Put the tongues back in their bags. I don't want to see it. You know, you, you keep traditional values, traditions. There are the... <laughs> There aren't too many of them around anymore, so we better fight for the few we got left. All right, let me tell you, I love my country. I, I would love to tongue kiss the Statue of Happiness. You know, just reach my hand underneath that big smock she's wearing and, and just give her a nice freedom squeeze. Let's go to the phones. You're through to me, Richard Bastion. Hi, Ricky. I'm a Bastion, buddy. I've got a problem with what this country's become. Nobody gives a shit about holidays anymore. On Memorial Day, they don't remember the troops. They're shit-faced on pills at a sofa sale at the mall. On July 4th, they just want to get drunk for three days straight and blow shit up. What's wrong with slaughtering the British like we used to? Well, 
Well, what are you talking about? Oh, there, there no. are a lot of great traditions left, like, uh, like... Let's uh, bounce, eating, homie! Eating open-minded liberals and, and spreading... Uh, about. So, man, I was in the doctor's office, waiting to go in and have some shots in my forehead and lips. Right? So I'm sitting there, and I'm reading one of those women's magazines. You know the ones I mean. Sure, Brucey. The ones that give the teenage girls of America low self-esteem and eating disorders. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, what were we doing out of, right? Anyway, there was this article about bitches digging guys who don't work out. I mean, what the fuck, man? What's that? Dicks all sorts. People got different tastes. <laughs> you believe that shit, right? You, you believe that shit. Girls like poor guys too, right? <laughs> Whatever. You crack me up, man. That's just rumor made up by guys who don't got the bots. That's it. Yeah, I didn't realize that. I thought people had different opinions. Look, when a bitch sees you all cut standing there just out of the shower, water's dripping down your abs, your veins are popping out because you're jacked, and your towel is like slung real low, they see that shit. It's just more interesting, bro. Bitches like hard, straight lines. They don't like flat, all right? I'll show you a picture I took this morning when I got out of the shower. You'll see what I mean. I'm all right, Brucey. I'm really all right. What's he doing? He's sitting there reading some religious shit. Okay, now how can you how can you tell this shit's religious? What what is it? What's going on with it? I'm sure it is. It's in a different fucking language. It's Spanish or something. Well, that 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 is a sure what's sign. Okay, now what you're sitting across from right there is Al Conqueso. Nah, not my usual style, but whatever. Not enough rich superficial people for my liking. You know what I'm saying? It's all right. That was fun. Yeah, man. Where the fuck is Nobody can touch our shit. I mean, no one else was flashing the cash that we were, right? Nobody was rocking bling like ours. No one could touch your box. We're fucking pimps. We are the money. Did you see the way those bitches were scoping me? They love I missed that, Brucey. Well, you must have been in the can or something. Okay. Not really my style, but whatever. I really need to go and work my abs. Excuse. You tired of flaming, little boy? Okay, friend, where to? You made my mind. We're going to Mohanet Avenue. No, no, no. Here we go. That's uh, very kind of you. That was good times. They will write books about times like this. Winners, relaxing, know what I mean? Screw you!
Only three blocks from the ghetto. Today we've got Allen versus Davis, case 465. Okay, I read you. Before me is LeVar Davis and Angela Allen. You two used to be in a relationship. And Miss Allen is suing you for $5,000 to fix damages to her car you did with a baseball bat? Mr. Davis, can you explain yourself? Your Honor, that female is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like the truth to me. Court is adjourned. Hey, you're not even gonna hear my side of it? Oh, well, shit. We got some time to kill. Why not? Approach the bench, Miss Allen. Okay, yes, Your Honor. Now sit on my lap. Um, okay. There, there. Isn't that better? Now tell me what happened to you, baby, while I stroke your back. Well, I was together with LeVar for a year, and he started acting real crazy. Hey! What are you doing? Oh, shh, woman, woman, shh, calm down. I'm soothing you. It's part of the legal process. Now, Mr. Davis. Yes, Judge Grady. I mean, we were together for a while. She was fine. She carries herself well. And she's got big uh -uh's, if you know what I mean. She sure does. I'm feeling them right now. Hold still, girl. But she's evil and a cheater. She scratched my brand new truck. I needed a truck because I'm an accountant. Is that so? You scratched his truck? His new accountancy truck? The kind of truck a man who works in an office buys so he can feel like a man again? What kind of woman scratches a man's truck? That's his manhood you're scratching. The very essence of his masculinity. He sits outside my house all times of the night. He's out there in the morning watching. Get the ass contra me. I'm here to see Mr. Gavelli. I was sent by a mutual friend. Come on. Uh, someone here to see you. Here. Oh, so you're the one who's getting involved with that nonsense for my dear friend James Pegorino. I don't know what you Spare you're... me, please. I'm an old man. I ain't got much time left. Our mutual friend told me everything. Thank you. It made me <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> people are so damn vain. Some people? <clears throat> All people. Even you, even me, an old man facing the end. And I still care. Care how I look. Care that when I shit myself, the pretty nurse has to clean it up. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, well, uh, you know... And I care about my legacy. I've worked hard for this, this line of work. Now some Russian assholes think they can march in and take control of rackets my family has run for 50 years. <laughs> you mean 50 years of you bleeding the city dry might finally <laughs> come to an end? <laughs> I know it's a terrible <laughs> tragedy. <laughs> But if it wasn't me, it would just be someone else. So it might as well be me. Yes. Let me tell you, that faggot friend of yours, Bernie Crane, his boyfriend, he's being blackmailed by them damn Russians. They want him to put certain contracts up for tender. Windows, bus lines, cleaning, ones we control. These Russian fucking bastards are trying to finish us. What do you want me to do about it? I want you to work with me. In exchange for what? The police have a file on you an inch thick. In exchange for that. In exchange for that guy you've been asking about being brought here from wherever it is he's hiding, Switzerland or some shit. <sighs> okay, good. What do you want me to do? A good friend of mine is coming into town to give a speech on the new threat to Liberty City. Russian organized crime. I got a feeling some people ain't gonna want that speech to happen. 
Maybe the guy you love, this Dmitri Raskolov, has an interest in keeping this story out of the press. Make sure our boy gets to City Hall. <coughs> He's coming in from upstate. <sighs> He'll be at Grand Eastern Terminal on Bismarck. show with boring men in sunglasses. You guys waiting for me? Nico Bellic, right? Yeah, that's me. Stay in convoy with us all the way to City Hall. All right? Sure. to see you as soon as I've delivered the speech. Don't say that, John. You'll be feeling like a teenager again in no time. Those are the wonders of modern medicine. Oh, I'm going to bring up everything we discussed. When I'm done at the podium, Mayor Ochoa is going to be dedicating half his annual budget to cleaning this problem up. <laughs> he doesn't want to start getting reckless with the lives of Liberty City voters. No, John, if it's your driver, why is this road closed? Is there a problem? Another roadblock? This definitely wasn't mentioned on the traffic report. I'm going to go and move the barriers. Mr. Jefferson, let's get out of here! I don't know anything to these people. If I get out of this, punks like these three rascals off are gonna wish they never got off the boat here.
You've got to get us to the Civic Citadel. That was a mistake they didn't want to make. If you're gonna try to take out a politician, you better take him out for sure. You are quite the popular man, Mr. Jefferson. Politicians are as crooked as the gangsters. They don't understand that things are different here. Yeah, sure. You are as clean as the driven snow. I'll explain that important cultural difference to one of these Russian gangsters if our paths cross. You can actually inject it straight up your anus. You've said some nasty things about our best friends, the paparazzi. If they don't stop people like you, we wouldn't have a job. Uh, well... The paparazzi are, are doing a job, aren't they? Um, I don't know who you are, but you got me here. Goes to show, some immigrants have the best interest of the country in their hearts. I'll tell John you did well. And if, uh, you know, most people would uh, um, hide in a tree taking pictures of... But if you go, no, it's all right. It's for a newspaper. It's my job. They go, oh, go on then. <laughs> 